Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, good to see y'all. There's so many here in the chat already. Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. It is, uh, this is Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And you are in our morning virtual quilt retreat called the Situation Room. And I'm so glad you've joined us. This is wonderful. I hope all of you had a wonderful Christmas. If you're watching the replay, it is December 26th, 2023, day after Christmas. And um, we all survived, it look, looks like, right? <laughs> we made it. <laughs> yeah, woohoo. Oh, good. I'm glad you made the live chat. Hi, Dave. Hey, everybody. Oh, my goodness, you guys. It was a very nice, quiet day here. Uh, you know, all the kids live elsewhere, so um, they inundate us throughout the year. <laughs> so, hi, Betty. Good morning, everybody. So, I uh, my new Christmas gift was, it's called a Next Mug. And I don't know if you can tell. It's got little lights on the bottom there. And it's got little indicators over here. But there's a battery in the bottom of this and there's a little coaster that is actually a little electronic plug over here and it keeps my morning coffee at the same temperature that I set it to for up to two hours. So that's cool. I really. Uh, oh, hi, Diane. It's your first live. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, oh, for those of you that are new, we have a virtual kitchen. And there are already lots of goodies over there. There's uh, some more coffee and juice and pastries and breakfast things. So please wander over and make yourself at home. Plenty to share. No calories, no fat. Got to love that, right? Hey, is anybody uh, get gearing up in their brain for losing weight in the new year? Anybody doing that? Leave me a comment if you are. Wendy wants to know how to get to the virtual kitchen. It's just right over across the room on the left side over there. The, um, the bathrooms are right over to the other side of that. <laughs> and we, when you go to a retreat, they usually have a, uh, a big room that we can all sew in. And then there is a kitchen not too far from there that we can just wander over, right? Uh, so you're trying to lose weight and people are doing Pilates. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Every year, this is our, this is going to be, our, you know, our year to do that. Right. I started virtual weight watchers in 2022 real, real weight watchers virtually is on, on the phone. 2022 Keith and I both did and, uh, lost quite a bit of weight between the both of us. But, um, yeah, that really seemed to work, just counting points. And then um, I I did the program for like seven months and then stopped and went into maintenance. So, uh, and I've, I've, good. T. Moore says she had lost 70. Yeah, it comes and goes, right? Yeah. New year is always the time when we talk about uh, reshaping, <laughs> whether it's our lives or our bodies or whatever. <laughs> Wow. You've lost 110 pounds, Allison. God bless you. Good girl. Yeah. Um, there's nothing better for you. Yep. You know, uh, yeah, I, I think my heaviest, well, of course, the Air Force kept me in check for most of my adult life, which probably was very uh, good because uh, I have a tendency to be overweight. But the heaviest I've been since uh, since I got out was, where am I at now? 45 pounds heavier than I am right now. So uh, yeah, and then Keith was probably 20 heavier than he is right now. So anyway, I've managed to keep it off just by, uh, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube of people who were doing Weight Watchers and watched how they cooked their meals. And that really helped me to learn how to cook differently. And I've maintained that cooking standard of doing like in, a simple thing, instead of drizzling olive oil in the bottom of a pan to get ready to cook something, to fry it, um, I spray olive oil. So you're using a quarter of a teaspoon instead of a couple of tablespoons, just little stuff like that 
So, uh, yeah, Free Spirit says she gained 10 pounds yesterday. <laughs> my neighbor brought over some rum balls. Woo, those were good. I made my neighbors, uh, let me get to my pictures so I can show you guys, because I did take pictures of them wherever they went. Here they are. I made the, the bowl cozies. I don't know if you can see them. See my bowl cozies? So I made bowl cozies using the template that I got from Creative Notions Quilt Shop. And the fabric, you know, I had the little labels on them and stuff. It was real cute. I'd never made any myself. I'd, I'd attempted it and failed. And this one, I was like, okay, I'm really going to pay attention. If you get the Creative Notions Quilt Shop uh, subscription box, they've got great instructions on how to do all of this. So I was wandering around my, my sewing room going, well, what kind of fabric do I want to use for these? And I thought, I'll just, I'll just use my ugly fabric. Okay. Break out the tilde. <laughs> I'm not a fan of tilde fabric. Oh my goodness. I mean, they turned out super cute when they were all made up. But the tilde fabric, a lot of people love it. It's just not my cup of tea. So it was, that was kind of funny. I looked at that fabric. I'm like, Bleh, I don't like it. It's just too muted and too, too soft for me. Are you able to sew different sizes with the template? Kay wants to know. No, this one is just for the 10 inch square. So, you know, afterthought. So the ones I made really are just plain regular fabric. Uh, I've got a Star Wars layer cake that's got to be seven or eight years old. So this would work on that focus fabric for the Star Wars and make it for the little boy, right? That would have been perfect. So this is really good if you want to make bowl cozies out of, uh... <laughs> of course, yes, your jaw dropped when I said Tilda was my ugly fabric. Oh my goodness. I don't know where it came from. It, it rolled in in some kind of um, kit somewhere, I guess. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So funny. Oh my gosh. Corey Yoder's putting out a whole new big thing of patterns for her new line, Starberry. And uh, yeah, Dave, Frito's not up yet. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to, uh, to get that fabric in. It'll be out in the stores, I think in May, but she's got a whole bunch of patterns. And, um, I ordered, uh, my, I ordered all the new, uh, patterns that she's got coming out. So I've got them coming in. I can't wait. Paula made a queen size quilt with Tilda. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Y'all it's fan. Okay. Kim, she's of like mine. She says she's not a Tilda fan either. You know, that's the beauty of uh, having all of the amazing fabric designers that are out there for us, isn't it? So. Okay, so I continued to work on the Christmas tree. I did. Uh, I got it all. Got it. So it's all around it. You know, I finished the top. Y'all, that was that was a feat doing that. Finished the top. Got it, uh, the the borders on it. And don't you know, let me see. Do I have it pinned? I think I have it pinned. I do. This thing, I'll shake it loose here, curves. <laughs> it curves. Crazy. It has a giant, let me get out of the way. It's got a big, I've kind of let it hang. Maybe this, maybe this isn't straight. I don't even have it hanging straight. This thing goes down this way. It's not that terrible. So I'm going to put it on the long arm, long ways, not short ways, and just do a stipple on it and try to get that straightened out on the frame on the long arm. This pattern has really been a challenge, y'all. Really been a challenge. Oh, my nose is itching. South Texas. Oh, yours curved too, Mrs. P. Really? 
Well, I am happy, not happy that yours curved, but I'm happy to know that it's not me. I was wondering. So yeah, the plan is, is to put it on the long arm, long ways, spray it to death, pat it down, get it to block it on its on the long arm. There we go. <laughs> That's a great thought. Free Spirit says they're not straight in nature either. I'm replicating. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So uh, this morning, so the only thing that's missing from this thing now is the tree skirt. And the tree skirt is a Dresden. I'll let you guys see it up close so you can see what I'm aiming for. But I want you to take a look. So they're appliqued on. And across the top, they're not in that semicircle that a Dresden normally makes. I'm not sure how. Look at that. I'm not. They look straight across on the trunk to me. So I'm not sure how that happened. I don't know what the di digitizer did. But so here is the Dresden plate. And I played with this some yesterday. And uh, I want to show you guys how, um, can I shorten it where it curves? No, ma'am. Guadalupe, there's no way. No, ma'am. <laughs> Dude, she says, put on your hanger a little crooked so it hangs straight. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm going to give it a shot to try to get it right. So today what I was going to do was I was going to cut the, um, I was going to cut the tree skirt with you guys. So, um, and then before we get started with that, I want to let you guys know too, I had said, um, if you're, if you're joining me for the Kimber Bell mini quilts series, I had said we would finish up and put it all together on Monday, which was yesterday, which was Christmas. So I'm going to be doing that today. So I'll have a second live today, uh, 10 a.m. Central. <clears throat> I've got all of my snowmen done and I'm going to be cutting them out. Even if you're not uh, following along, this might, you might find it interesting or just something to watch. So, you know, the series at least. And that way... That way you um, you can pick up some tips and tricks for machine embroidery, you know, if you want to. But uh, so I got all my little snowmen done and the middle part and everything. And we're I'm going to demo the trimmer by George. We're going to demo that. So if you got one, I'll show you how it works. If you don't have one, you're going to want one. And then we'll stitch it together and back it and bind it. So that's this morning at 10 a.m. Then after that, I have to run to the grocery store and go get my groceries because we're leaving Thursday for, <clears throat> uh, we're leaving Thursday for Galveston. We're going down to Stella Del Mar RV resort down there. Jamie. Okay. Had your girlfriend ask Mo Queens the date for the event. They said they don't have it yet. Check your website. No, that's fine. So the, uh, the plan is April. And right now I emailed Darren back <clears throat> Friday, last Friday. And uh, we're, we're looking at like 11th and 12th. No, the, the weekend following the 11th. I have a thing in Bernie, Texas that I'm doing with the Cibolo Creek Guild on the 11th of April. So that's over an hour away from me. So we're just probably take the motor home up there, spend the night. And then, and it's, you know, it's at like six in the evening. Ugh, I don't want to be driving home from Bernie, uh, you know, that late at night. That's not my thing. So spend the night up there and then just take off from there and head over to Tempe. So we'll probably take the motor home. All right. So I think that, oh, somebody had asked me, uh, they got the Sapporo iron for Christmas and uh, have fun, Olivia. Enjoy your day. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to have you. <clears throat> it needs to be a guessing game. Where's Becky going next? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, we're going somewhere every month through May. Right now, I don't have anything planned for June, but every month we're going somewhere. So the only times the Situation Room will be closed will probably be during um, the cruises because I can't. I can't get that out, but I plan on doing some pre-recorded videos for you. So you get some, you know, you get something to watch while I'm gone. Okay. So yeah, someone got the Sapporo iron and they asked me to show my setup. So you guys can see how it works and everything. So the Sapporo iron, it's gravity fed and it is, I've had mine now for, I counted nine years. I've had that thing for nine years. It's crazy. And it's it's got a small footprint. It's really preferred by uh, garment sewers. But I like it because it has a condenser or a solenoid on the outside of the iron. And so water doesn't stay inside the iron at all. So it never spits on your fabric. So... Uh, the solenoid turns the water into steam and pushes the steam through the iron as opposed to water sitting in the iron and then being turned to steam and pushing out onto your clothes. Yeah, you can always binge watch previous videos. You guys, I've got like 800 videos. What's the largest size needed for the mini quilts? You can actually make these in a five by seven. The mini quilts, you certainly can. <laughs> been there done that <laughs> she says she got the Sapporo last year works great until you iron the hose had to replace it a couple days ago <laughs> yes my friend also uh when you get a Sapporo iron I would run through the drill and the drill is you simulate ironing over your cord or having the cord get caught under there creating a hole and you notice a stream like a fire hose shooting across your sewing room. Practice reaching up real quick and cranking that knob down to turn off the water. And that solves that problem. Yeah. So that's, that's always fun. Yeah. But if you get it in your head, as soon as it happens, cause you know, there's just water coming and your first thought is plug the hole. Well, no, the only way to plug the hole is to crank the knob on the, on the jug of the water. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I'll show you guys. I'm just going to turn the camera here a little bit. I've got to do some ironing anyway. There's Gypsy. She's going with me to Galveston so we can talk. We'll have situation room in Galveston. All right. <clears throat> so there is the iron and it gets super, super hot. I've got three or four. Uh, things underneath it. I'm going to walk in front of you guys. Pardon me. So I've got three or four things underneath it. So this is a luggage <clears throat> wrap. This is a luggage handle wrap that I just, this gets hot. It gets really hot. And this is the solenoid. And then <clears throat> you've got, of course, the electric cord and you have the water cord. Okay. I don't put the minerals on it, the demineralizer. I don't do that at all because I use distilled water in mine and that's all I use. So then underneath I have, this is the silicone rest. It's very hot. That comes with, let me see if I have a hot pad in here. I probably do of some sort. Okay. This is the silicone rest that comes with it. It gets very hot, okay? And then I actually just put a piece of wood under that and it gets very hot. And then this is another silicone iron mat and it's pretty hot. I got this at Mall Queens. Yeah, this thing gets super hot, you guys. And I keep it at about uh, the setting, I keep it at, um, that's upwards of four, you know, like three and a half is where I put it with whatever temperature that is. I have no idea. So this thing is crazy hot. 
Okay. So that's the iron itself. And it has a little button inside the handle that you can just makes the steam come out like that. Okay. So then I took the cover off. This is the, so this is an IV pole. I've got all these in my Amazon store, y'all. So this is an IV pole and I just created a little cover for it with some rubber bands to hold it, to keep it from being ugly. And then here's the gallon jug of distilled water. And my husband fangled a, that's a clothes hanger, a metal clothes hanger to loop it through the holes on the bottle up and over through the thing. And that's it. And then they are, the, the two hoses are joined together right here. What happened? Something went beep beep. Uh oh. Uh oh. So I also got my new camera, you guys. And, um, nope. Movie area and memory card is full. Cannot record HD movies. So I'm I'm working through issues with my new camera. So, but it's here and I plan to switch over, but I probably, I don't know if I'll be able to today or not. So this is the fabric I'm going to use for the tree skirt. The pattern used two different colors. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to use uh, one fabric. and iron this out and I've got to put heat and bond light on the back of it. So I wanted to show you guys what I'm going to do. Okay. I buy heat and bond light by the bolt. I got a little strip here. Now my brain is going, what am I going to do about that camera? That it just, it said the memory chip was full. So I have an idea of how I can change it. I'm just, I'm still learning these things. Okay. I just lay the fabric like right. I just lay the fabric right on top. So this is the adhesive side of the heat and bond light. And this is the fabric. And I just lay it and barely cover, I leave a little bit of fabric over the ends, okay, on the sides. And then I do a light tack around the edges on the fabric. This is just the easy way. I'm lazy. And then I will take a cutting mat and put it underneath and I keep a rotary cutter in here. I got a new rotary cutter. I ordered a new, um, another Ulfa. I was using the one that has the ball bearings in it from Fomore. I mean, it's pretty good. I just, I just prefer the Ulfa. I know there's a lot of Martelli girls, gals and guys out there. I just prefer it. This one is a Dritz, I think. So then when I cut it, I leave just a tiny bit of fabric. Okay, so that there's no heat and bond light extending past the edges of the fabric. Now I can do a good press on this. And I usually will leave this like five seconds at least because this iron is so crazy hot. I'll leave it in five seconds on every uh, part of this. Now to cover my ugly water bottle, the, the downside of this iron is it pulls because of its weight. You know, you've got the weight of the cords. 
and all that. I feel like I'm just talking blind because I can't see the comments. Let me turn the, the computer so I can see you guys. You have a Laura star. I've thought about that, but I, I don't have the space for it in this giant room. I just don't have the space for it. So yeah, I made, um, I made this little flamingo. It's a panel and I just use it to cover the water bottle. Yeah, the, the chip on this new camera told me that it's full. It's a different shooting mode. You guys, the tech involved with being a YouTuber. My goodness. <laughs> I'm getting it, though. I need to switch it over to 4K and not use the chip. And I think that that will work. But that's going to require me to fiddle around with a button for a second and see what it wants to do. So I'm just continuing to iron. I know it's very boring, but this is what we do, right? To get it right. You want to make sure you've got a really good adhesion on this. Okay. And that's hot, hot, hot. So I'm going to let it sit for a minute. And then I took a, just a piece of wood. I don't know if you guys can see it in here. There's a piece of wood in here. Like a little, see that? It's just a little piece of wood. That's all it is. Like a rectangular dowel almost. And it gives shape to the top of the flamingo head so it doesn't get floppy. Okay, so this is ready to go. And I'm gonna peel this off. See how glassy that is? That's a good adhesion for heat and bond light. I like heat and bond light. It just works really well in this process. If you um, prefer something like Misty Fuse, you may want to use an additional adhesive spray to make sure that stays on. I have not been successful with that. Look at that. That's the way it should look and you're going to get a good cut. Okay. So I'm going to use, now this is a standard tack mat and I just put zig on it yesterday to restick it. Okay. Let's see. I'm just making sure. Uh, the dimensions of this bolt, there it's like 20 inches, I think. And how many yards? 35, 17 inches and 35 yards. I buy it whenever, um, whenever it's on sale at Joann's by the bolt. I kind of keep an eye on that. So I just put Zig on this mat so it's brand new sticky and this mat seen, definitely seen better days. I'm just going to put this on here. Now, I want to show you guys how cool. All right, put this there. Okay. Now I'm ready to cut. So that's kind of neat. I'm going to have to do it with... Uh, this camera because my other one needs settings changes. So I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. I need to line this up. This is the 24 inch mat. I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped a step in the process. I did it yesterday. That's why I didn't think about it. Okay. I'm going to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm going to switch back over to um, the laptop. I want to show you guys how, because I, I did scan it in yesterday. Look at that new King Quilter. We got the new long arm up. That was two days worth of work over the holiday, you guys. Ninja pretty. She needs a name. I guess King. I don't know. I'm not very imaginative. But very excited to get uh, stitching on that. Thank you, Nancy. 
Um, what kind of stabilizer do I use if I can see through material? Guadalupe, I'll use um, just a, a paper tearaway. If it's a, for embroidery, I'll use a tearaway. So let me um, show you guys what I did. I need my mouse. <clears throat> the queen. <laughs> His majesty. I love that, Sue. That's great. I, maybe I instantly, I just love it. Thank you. That's a good one. I appreciate that. Okay. Let me share. Oh, I need to, I need to open up the, um, brother canvas and get signed into that so that you guys can see what I did. Hopefully it's still there. I think I saved it. All right. So let me go to present, share screen. Pam, Charlie's a good one. That's my ex-husband's name. Mm. <laughs> I'll have to skip. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to share this with you guys. Alfalfa. Now, Kim, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a good one. Okie doke. So this is Brother... Uh, Brothers Canvas Workspace. You go to canvasworkspace.brother.com. Let me make sure you see what I see. Yes, good. All right. So yesterday I scanned in that piece, and it's this one right here, I believe. I think. Yes. I'm going to go in here and edit. So when I work with this, so I scanned in this, uh, if you look at my picture there on the side, this is what I scanned in. Okay. So we've got all the little words and I chose outside only. I did a scan to correct, connect, direct cut. Yeah. Scan to direct cut and then outside only and saved it to canvas cloud. So here we go. And I'm going to grab a hold of it and I'm just going to drag it off the mat. Okay. And now to clean up the mat, I just highlight the entire mat and make sure everything's selected and then hit delete on my keyboard. Now, when you get back here, it's got a little weird, like a thing right there. See that? So what you can do, let me make it bigger. Now, what you can do is double click on the, on the line itself and you'll get what are called, if I can get it. There we go. You'll get these nodes or what they call control points. So I got a little box right up here. Now, this is the online version, the downloadable version that is on your desktop. If you've downloaded it and use it locally without being out on the Internet, yours might look different. But this is I'm working online. This is not the one that I, that is loaded on my laptop. So all you have to do up here at the top, it's got straight or curve. And it defaulted to straight because that's a straight line. And then you can click hide control points and that'll take away a whole bunch of them if you've got any extras. Here you can add a control point. See, there's a little plus. Then there's a minus. And then this is to open or close an outline. I want to get rid of that little line. I don't know what it is. It's probably the fold in the paper, I would imagine. So I'm going to click the top one. And I'm just going to click on this minus delete point. There's a whole bunch of them on top of each other. See this? I'm just going to keep clicking it and hit minus. When I reach the last one, the whole line will turn light blue like that. And I'm going to click minus again. There. Now, let me go a little smaller. There we go. Look at that. So there's my Dresden piece. And it's all ready to go. Well, I don't want to sew the Dresden. I want it. I just want it to cut five Dresdens because my brain was trying to think of how to make this work yesterday and I couldn't do it. I, it, it was a, it would have been too, I could do it, but it had been way involved. So I'm going to switch to a 24 inch mat because when you pull this up, you get a, uh, a 
12 inch mat by default and you change the mat size that you want to work on by going to the project tab and i'm just going to change it to 12 by 24. okay so there we go there's the 24 inch mat that looks good now i'm going to come over here to basic which is shapes and i want to scroll down to this triangle right here i'm going to grab it and drag it over and then I'm going to rotate it like so. That's not quite straight. Let me see here. So the idea is, is to get this pretty straight like that. Okay. And then we'll move it. Whoops. I want these two to be touching. And I need, I, I don't know if I need to make them just, I need to rotate. I can see there's a gap. That looks pretty good. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight. That looks like a Dresden, right? But it's two different shapes. So highlight and then, so they've, they're both selected. Right click and weld. Oh, uh, will it undo it? Control Z. Yeah. So I need to move this a little bit more so that's inside. But see, I got a little weird jinky jank there in this corner. So this needs to be just a little bit bigger. I, um, I had them real close yesterday. That looks pretty good. I'll leave it like that. Okay. Because I could sit here and fiddle with it for another 10 minutes and bore you guys to death, but that's not good for the channel. <laughs> so now I'm going to right click and weld. There we go. There's my Dresden. So now I've taken two separate shapes and made it into one shape by welding it. So the pattern, I actually uh, printed out the pattern. I bounced this into... Um, in brilliance and then printed it out. And the, the size that I need is, uh, like 8.75 by four and a quarter. So I'm going to click this and come up here to the properties box. See, it's too big. So I'm going to come to properties and I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. So I'm going to turn this into 8.75. Nope. And then this was four and a quarter. I think. There we go. So that's the, that's what the Dresden looks like. Once you, if you were to cut out that Dresden, fold it in half, sew it across the bottom, flip the point, turn it right side out. I know this because I actually sewed the paper and did all of that and got the actual size. So that's pretty much what it would look like right there. All right. So I need five of these and I'm going to rotate this uh, 90 Okay. And now I want to right click and duplicate. And let me turn this one around. That looks pretty good. All right. So I'm going to highlight both of these, right click and duplicate. Move these down to right here. See where I'm going? Pretty cool, huh? And then I need one more of these. Right click and duplicate. And I'm going to put it right there. Okay. Now I need to highlight all of these. I think this is right. 
right click and group. Let me do this last one and that one, right click and group. Okay, 19.78 by 10.40 is the size and I did a 20 inch cut. Maybe I made those a little bit wide, it doesn't matter, but that's how I did that. And then I can just download. So um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to my projects. That's pretty much how I did it. I might've done wrong on the math. So I'm gonna use, let me I'd hit delete on my keyboard. I want to use this one because I know that this one, yeah, that's 18.44. That one's a little bit better. I know that that one will fit on my fabric by 10.44. Okay, that one will fit. Perfect. Yep. So I'm going to download it and I'm going to, you can download to the scan and cut. That's it. Okay. So there you go, guys. Oh, hi, Kay. We're not doing a giveaway today. Um, okay. It does look like Stan Laurel's tie from Laurel and Hardy Dave. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yep. That's, so I'm going to cut all of those out and then I'm going to sew them together. You know, my Marie, my um, <laughs> my uh, my other king quilter that I had was Elvis. It sure was, because this is the second one. The first one I had was the original king quilter. What I like about this one, switching subjects. What I like about this one is the original king quilter, the the tablet on it, and even the little mini screen got its power from the head. Now the tablet that's got the software in it, the Pro Stitcher software is powered independently. That's a Microsoft, um, it's a Windows tablet. So it's powered independently. So that's really nice. Um, so that, you know, if something happens to the power in the body, you can still use the tablet. You know, you can still like if something goes wonky, you know, you can still make the thing work anyway. That was that was a problem with the other one. So. OK. So my other camera here. I just need to press a few buttons, you guys, and I think that I can get it so it works right. I need to turn it off and turn it on. And then I need to go into the menu and image size quality, file, file format, and go into 4K and tell it okay. And it's gonna execute something, sorry. Completed, okay. And let me take so now shooting mode movie. It's going to do something. Okay, let me take this out. There. Now I want to see if you guys see what. Yeah, see that blinky thing on my screen? And you can see the wide and the telephoto and the record. That is not, that's called. Um, when you can't see that, like on this one, you can't see it. That's called clean HDMI. And so right now it's not giving me clean HDMI. I'm going to have to play around with the settings on that and get it working. Jude says, remember to clean your machines after all your Christmas sewing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, I'm uh, I'm really excited to get using the new King Quilter 2 from Sewing Machines Plus. There was a comment in the, oh, that's not crooked. Hmm. 
or that is crooked the way it's hanging. There was a comment in our Facebook group, Power Tools with Thread Facebook group, and somebody said, "What well, doesn't Becky like Grace? Yeah, Becky likes Grace very much. Because <laughs> my last long arm, if you're new, uh, was the Grace 21X Elite. Fabulous machine, but uh, so machines plus. I've been uh, working with Blaine Austin off and on over the years, and he's been after me for a while to... Uh, to influence for them. That's what Google says my duty title is now is online influencer. So um, offered me a, a great deal that I couldn't refuse and my contract with Grace was up. So uh, I'm sending the head back to Grace. Uh, they, they didn't want the frame back. So uh, sold that. And Emma, if you're watching, I've got some goodies for you that we didn't include. <laughs> so if you're ever back in San Antonio, look me up and I will be happy to drive and meet you and give those to you. So anyway, um, I'm just going to turn this off. This is annoying. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, so the, it got here and I got a video of it and I did take a video of the uh, setup and everything and putting it all together. Day one was just the table. And then day two is, you know, was uh, finishing up the rails and getting the machine on and plugged in and hooked up and all of that. So I am I'm very pleased with it. Y'all, this thing slides around like it's just floating on air. It is incredible. And I'm really enjoying that. And then uniquely to this, which is I'd never seen this before. Yeah, the Grace 21 is fantastic, Jude. You're absolutely right. So this is really neat. The X-axis, the track, it's it's the blue one here. It's actually mounted to the frame. Very cool. Very, very cool. So Pat says, do I do scan and cut tutorials for beginners? Yes, ma'am. I absolutely do. I have lots of beginner scan and cut tutorials. Oh, good. Yeah, you got one for Christmas. Good for you. That's awesome. Or you just got one. Yeah, I do. I have a lot of them. Matter of fact, I have an entire playlist on my channel called Scan and Cut, and I baby step it. So now I'm just a fabric crafter. Okay. I don't do the vinyl and the rhinestones and all of that, the multitude of stuff that the Scan and Cut can do. That is not my thing. But um, yeah, now also on this one, I like. I may or may not use it, but I got the rear handles and there's a rear display. I've never had a rear display on any of my long arms. So that's very cool that, and I've got the laser on it. I think I have the laser in the wrong place, but I've got the laser on it here. And, you know, if I wanted to do pantograph quilting, I could, I've, not very good at that, which is why I have the robotics. So this thing's okay. Eh, we'll see. Jury's out. But anyway, um, so uh, yeah, I guess I need to get cutting on that. So let me, I want to get this camera out of the way. And I want to move this so you guys can see. And I'm going to zoom in way up on the machine if it'll do it. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Just like you're standing right there. How about that? You like that? Back that up just a little bit. That's cool. All right. So let's get this cut. Oh, don't bump it, Becky. Okay. The thing, it times out. And if it times out, just tap it. It'll get uh, back where it was. So just a real quick, this is the way I teach, but you've got pattern and scan. And pattern are, those are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. And if you want to get the pattern you just got from the cloud, there's a button down here called retrieve data. And that's what we want. And where do I want to get it from? I can get it from inside the machine if I saved the design there from the cloud, from a USB, or you can get it if you're cabled to a computer. So I'm gonna hit cloud, 
and it's going to pull down the last design that I sent down. It says retrieving and it just pulled it up. Now I've got a, a black or a gray bar right here across the bottom and that's because it knows the mat is a 24 but I don't have it set for 24 inch cutting. So I need to go into the wrench and where it says cut area 11.73 by 11.65, I'm gonna to touch that and change it to the 12 by 24 mat and tell it okay, and tell it okay. All right, so now I wanna scan it. I'm just gonna hit this blue bar, the blue button with the bar across it and click start. So it's gonna pull in the fabric and scan the fabric and I'm gonna make sure that the uh, design actually fits on the fabric. This is where the scan and cut makes its money. It's the magic because it can see what's on the mat. You don't get that with any other cutting machine. You kind of got to guess where to put the fabric if you are using any other cutting machine. So it looks like I have plenty at the top. I'm going to hit this button and jump down to the bottom. And I've got plenty on the bottom. I've got plenty all around on the sides. I'm just going to hit OK. And it says, please select and cut and start. Okay. I'm using the standard black blade. It's going to come over and do an initial depth test. And then it's going to come down onto the fabric and do another depth test. And then it's going to start to cut. And those depth tests are why you cannot cut different things on the mat that are not the same depth at the same time. I love how you can save fabric by nestling things up really close to one another. There we go. All done. I'm going to tell it okay. And go back to home and okay to cancel. And now I'm just going to eject the mat. All done. All done. That looks great. Oh. Sorry for the blur, guys. I'm trying to work with dual cameras. I'm going to get this figured out today. All right. So let me pull this up. Nice. First you weed it, getting all the fabric off that you don't need. We got nice clean cuts. Perfect. Look at my little Dresdens. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. And now I'm going to use the little spatula that came with it. And whenever you are pulling something off the mat that's a different size, you always want like the skinniest part to be pulled up last so that you've got less pull on it. So I'm gonna scooch under here and you wanna be real careful to kind of lift versus pull. That way you don't stretch, especially when you're on a brand new mat, like this one just got restuck. And gently lift it off and then help it retain whatever shape. If you're doing lettering, that's really easy to tug those and you can really misshape in them, which is not a big deal if you're stitching it on your, your applique using a domestic machine. But if you're using the embroidery machine, the way I do with Stitch Artist 2, then you will end up with your fabric being a different shape from the placement line. That's a problem. Last one. So I just, because of the way these are going to make a semicircle, I just didn't, it's not going to be um, easy enough on the embroidery machine. So McQuilty Buddy Lisa recommended 
I'm turning back around here so I can sit down by this. Yeah. I, Quilty Buddy Lisa recommended I do like a, go ahead and put these together like I would a regular Dresden and get that semicircle at the top and then just use like a half circle and of the same fabric and put it over it to cover it. How come you can't get your skin and cut to cut like that, Pam? Bye, Jackie. Enjoy your day. Where'd my mouse go? I'm missing my mouse. Here he is. Oh. Um. Hey, while you guys are here, uh, if you are so inclined, uh, it'd be awesome if you would uh, hit the subscribe button. Free to do. Easy. Helps the channel more than you know. And um, hit the thumbs up if you like the video and then a um, little bit more effort. But if you share it, then that's always nice, too. But subscribing is awesome. I've got major, major prize winnings for hitting those milestone subscribers. My eye right now is on that 100,000 subscriber plaque from YouTube. I can't believe that I'm even anywhere. I can't believe that I can see that in the distance. Uh, we are almost to 69,000 subscribers. So uh, I'm, I, I am so blessed to have you guys in my life. And I really appreciate that very much. But so now, yeah, the, the prize, that 100,000 subscriber is, I can see the, I can see it barely way off in the distance, <laughs> but I can see it. So uh, I'd appreciate it. All right. So I was just going to take these and sew them together now uh, using the domestic machine, using my straight stitch. And, um, oh, you got a good t-shirt for Christmas, Wendy? What's it say? <laughs> I'm just going to stitch these together and then it's almost eight o'clock. I think Keith has slept in because I don't hear the dogs out and about. So that kind of leads me to believe that he, he slept in. This is awesome. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just sew these and then put them on like the tree skirt, iron it down, and then I'm going to stitch it on with a uh, domestic using um, using probably, you know, one of my regular machines with the blanket stitch. Oh, look at that. You know what I need? I need a Teflon foot. Yeah. Cause I've got this rubber. That's not good. Okay. I'm going to have to stitch this on the domestic and I'm going to use a Teflon foot cause it's kind of curling up because of the rubber. Yeah. I'm going to have to use a different machine. More to come on that. I'm going to unstitch that. Jack the Ripper. Yep. Yeah, if you're new to this and you start stitching something and it doesn't look right, just stop right there and fix it because it's not going to get any better. <laughs> Do I have a video on connecting the canvas to the sewing machine? So you don't connect canvas to the sewing machine. Canvas does not connect to your sewing machine. Canvas connects to your scan and cut. And yes, I do have a video on that. Certainly do. Um, you always use paper and a short stitch length. I don't want to peel that paper away. That's annoying. Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and use the, um, the, I've got a Teflon foot just for this. It works great. Yep. It's just like sewing, when you're sewing vinyl together, same thing. Why did I put the heat and bond on if I'm sewing them? Jacqueline wants to know. I like to iron it down first. And then just, and cause I'm just going to sew. Well, first of all, I like heat and bond on the fabric. If I'm going to cut it on the scan and cut, if you try to cut fabric without a substrate on the back, it can be done, but you run the risk of, um, use the peel. Oh, there you go. Dave, that's smart. Use the film. I peeled off the SF off of the heat and bond light. That's smart. So if you don't use a substrate on the back of your fabric, it frays really badly as you pull it off. Just the nature, it's, it's sticky and it's pulling. That mat's too sticky right now to cut fabric. That's a standard tack. So, yeah. 
Well, you guys, it's eight o'clock. Our hour is up. Thank you so much for being with me. Please hit the thumbs up on the video. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to be back at 10 a.m. Central to put together the snowmen for uh, Chilling with My Snowmies, Kimber Bell, January mini quilt. I'll be glad to have that finished and out of the way and ready to go for January 1st. All right, y'all. I will see you later. If I don't see you at 10 today, I'll see you tomorrow morning. You guys go sew something. Bye.